Hello Hunters! Now that the game has been out for a while and the optimal playstyle has been established, we finally feel confident about releasing our first guide. In this video, we'll be taking an in-depth look at all of the Greatsword Switch skills, closely examining their properties, mechanics, strengths, weaknesses, and all the situations in which they're useful. This video should have some new information for both beginner and experienced Greatsword users alike, as a lot of the mechanics detailed in this guide are not widely known. We're also going to be talking about some frame data, so we feel like it's important to mention that the measurements were done manually by a human, and as such, they might be off by a few frames because of imperfect inputs and the game's poor input detection. The first switch skill we're going to tackle is, well, the tackle, which is equipped by default. The move is an attack with your shoulder, which can be executed either while charging, after a kick, after rolling while unsheathed, or after a wide sweep. This move doesn't consume sharpness, and it does blunt damage, which means you can KO and exhaust monsters with it. The amount of damage and KO you deal increases with your current charge level. Executing a tackle will let you skip the current charge slash and go into the next one, which makes it useful for shortcutting into your strongest move. The tackle also grants you 50% damage reduction and hyper armor, which means you can't be knocked down by the majority of attacks. Thanks to this property, the tackle can be used to tank through attacks, allowing you to land a counter hit afterwards while the monster is recovering. Keep in mind that hyper armor doesn't protect against pin attacks, statuses such as stun, sleep, paralysis, and blights, so be careful with monsters that have those. Next up is a guard tackle. This skill is unlocked upon reaching 4 star village or 2 star hub. It's an advancing guard performed with your weapon with a slap at the end of the animation that does blunt damage and consumes sharpness. It can be executed the same way as the regular tackle, and its motion and KO value are also affected by your charge level. As opposed to putting you in a hyper armor state however, the guard tackle is a block, which means you're only protected from the front. The move behaves exactly the same as if you were simply guarding with your sword. Unlike with regular guarding however, you cannot be knocked back during a guard tackle. Guard grants you more damage resistance than hyper armor and protects you from most attacks, including pins. But blocking certain attacks requires a guard up skill. And provided the attack is guardable, guard tackle can defend you against all statuses and blights. This makes it overall a better defensive option compared to the tackle. Blocking an attack consumes sharpness as we're using our sword to defend. The sharpness, health, and stamina loss suffered upon guarding is related to the knockback you would suffer which depends on the knockback value of the attack you're guarding against, as well as the level of your guard skill. Now the guard skill is a waste for greatsword however, because as we mentioned before, guard tackle doesn't suffer from knockback, and the sharpness loss can be mitigated in better ways that we'll talk about later. There is one more important detail about the switch skill, which is supposed to be its whole selling point. Blocking a hit with a guard tackle will let you go straight into your strongest charged move, regardless of where you were in your combo. This can also be triggered with bombs and your teammates attacks. In theory this property could give the guard tackle an advantage over the regular tackle. The massive sharpness loss suffered by using this switch skill can be mitigated in a few different ways like we talked about. This includes stacking sharpness skills such as handicraft, razor sharp, and protective polish, or using the defense grinder rampage skill, which is by far the easiest and best option overall. A level 1 version of this skill completely nullifies sharpness loss from guarding, while subsequent levels restore an extra point of sharpness per level upon blocking an attack. Note that your sword hitting the enemy at the end of the guard tackle will still drain one point of sharpness as it's an attack and not a block. Both of these switch skills serve similar purposes, which is tanking through attacks and to serve as a shortcut into TCS or Rage Slash. However, guard tackle ends up being worse in most situations because of three main reasons. The first one is that according to our testing, Guard Tackle's animation by itself is about 12 frames longer than regular Tackle, which makes it straight up worse as a shortcut, unless you're using it for its gimmick. In fact, it's such a bad shortcut that skipping Strong Charge with Guard Tackle isn't even worth it, because it's going to be the exact same speed. We have also discovered a strange phenomenon where TCS starts with a level 1 charge by default after a Tackle, which makes the regular Tackle even more advantageous as a shortcut into TCS. We'll talk more about this when we discuss TCS. Overall, Guard Tackle is only really useful when you can guard a hit with it and there is a large enough opening to follow it up with a TCS, while Tackle remains consistently useful, even when you're not getting attacked. 
you have tested several different combos, and even when using the Guard Tackles gimmick to shortcut into TCS instantly, it is only between 12 to 19 frames faster than just using regular tackle. In a real hunt, this advantage is very unlikely to allow you to land a TCS that the regular tackle wouldn't be able to land. With Rage Slash, and in a favorable situation, Guard Tackle reaches level 3 charge between 20 to 31 frames faster than Tackle. Don't let this deceive you though. In practice, Guard Tackle has horrible synergy with Rage Slash, because ideally you want to be hit during Rage Slash, not before, and the regular Tackle lets you shortcut into Rage Slash quickly without requiring you to be hit. Basically, Guard Tackle and Rage Slash are competing with each other to tank attacks, which is why they have poor synergy. The second main problem with Guard Tackle is that it burns through sharpness extremely quickly, so we have to sacrifice damage skills to counteract this massive sharpness loss. The Defense Grinder Rampage skill is the most appealing option for this, however it is only available on a few Greatswords and none of those are top tier. The final issue is that the Guard Tackle does significantly less KO than Tackle. Also, it only has an active hitbox at the end of its animation, and that's on the left side of your character. This makes landing that KO damage on the monster's head much, much harder compared to the regular tackle, which has an active hitbox throughout its entire animation. This is a huge disadvantage as you will most likely get less KOs during hunts. Overall, guard tackle does have some very niche applications, but it is nowhere near as consistent and flexible as the tackle, which is easily the better option. If you still want to use the guard tackle after all of this for fun, we recommend using the Diablo's Greatsword with the Defense Grinder Rampage skill and Arousing War Palico to offset this weapon's negative affinity. Next up, we have the two Silkbind skills, which require Wirebug charges to perform, and build up the Wyvern Riding status on monsters. To trigger a Wyvern Ride, you need to deal a certain amount of damage with Aerial or Silkbind attacks. The first skill, Hunting Edge, is unlocked by default, and can be performed whenever your weapon is unsheathed, provided you are not in an attack animation. This move consumes two Wirebug charges, and each one of them has a cooldown of 6 seconds. The attack is a long range aerial spinning slash that can be cast in any direction, and upon connecting with the monster, your hunter leaps in the air, and you can follow up with a jumping charge slash, or a charged plunging thrust. These follow up attacks do more damage than their regular versions that you can execute from the air. Hitting the monster early in the hunting edge's arc will let you fly higher, giving you more time to charge up your aerial attack. But for some reason, if you hit the monster at the end of the Hunting Edge's arc, you won't be able to follow it up at all. Note that this move takes quite long to execute, and it doesn't have any iframes or hyper armor, which means you need large openings to safely land it. The other Silkbind option is the Adamant Charge Slash, which is unlocked after forging 8 unique Greatsword upgrades at the Smithy. This move, just like the previous one, can be executed while your weapon is unsheathed and you're not in an attack animation. Adamant Slash only uses one Wirebug Charge, and the cooldown is 13 seconds. The attack is similar to the Strong Charge Slash, however it can be performed anytime, does more damage, lets you move a long distance in any direction, and also grants you Hyper Armor and 50% damage reduction while charging. You can even control how far you go with the Slash. If you hold the left stick in any direction when your Hunter starts sliding, you'll go further. If you want to slide a shorter distance, leave the stick in neutral. As we mentioned earlier, this move is basically a buffed up, instant strong charge slash, so just like the SCS, it can be interrupted with a tackle, or followed up with a true charge, rage, or a strong wide slash. This comparison is a lot easier than the last one. Hunting Edge takes very long to execute, and consumes two wirebug charges, leaving you vulnerable during and after the attack for a long time. It also does poor damage, requires extreme precision to land, needs very long openings that you could probably just TCS, and offers no utility such as iframes or hyper armor. Its only purpose seems to be for mounting non-target monsters at the start of a quest, which you can do much more consistently anyway with Adamant Slash. We don't say things like this lightly, but Hunting Edge is just useless. Adamant Slash, on the other hand, is hands down the most useful and flexible new addition to the Greatsword Kit. It is an amazing tool for repositioning, and the hyper armor lets us create new openings on attacks that would otherwise be impossible to punish, greatly increasing the overall potential of the weapon. It also only uses one wirebug charge, and can mount most non-target monsters in one hit, provided you aim at their weak spot, making Hunting Edge completely obsolete. Adamant Slash is an absolute game changer and the obvious choice between these two skills. 
Now it's time for the last two switch skills. True Charge Slash, the crown jewel of the Greatswords kit, returns from Monster Hunter World. It is unlocked by default and is the third and final charged attack of the Greatsword. This move can be executed after a strong or an adamant charge slash. Tackle or guard tackle performed from the previous two moves. A strong wide slash. Or after blocking an attack with a guard tackle. The move has two hits, and if the first hit connects with a weak spot, the second hit becomes empowered, gaining a significant boost to its motion value. The first hit of the TCS doesn't have a flinch modifier, which means monsters usually won't flinch or topple from it. However, thanks to an oversight from the developers, it can still trigger part breaks and special thresholds such as Apex Topples and Magnamalo's Hellfire Topple, which may cause you to miss your second powerful hit. While testing, we have noticed an interesting phenomenon. When performed from certain moves, the TCS actually starts charging before your character enters the charge animation. Even if you immediately release the attack button when starting a TCS, your sword will glow, indicating that your attack is charged. Hilariously enough, the only way to execute an uncharged TCS is to start the move from a guard tackle, which is unaffected by this buck, I, I mean feature. If you perform a TCS after a regular tackle or strong wide slash, you'll start off with a level 1 charge, and if you start it after a strong or adamant slash, you'll be at level 2 charge by default. The focus skill doesn't affect this phenomenon at all. The true charge slash is the most important move for Greatsword. It does a lot of damage, but takes quite a while to execute. You ideally want to land as many TCSs as you can during fights, which is why knowing the monster's openings and knockdown timings is crucial. Our final switch skill is the Rage Slash, which is a returning move from Monster Hunter Generations, where it was known as Brimstone Slash. You can unlock it by completing the 5 star hub quest called Grasp the Greatsword. This skill replaces the TCS and can be performed in the exact same way. The move grants you hyper armor and 50% damage reduction while charging, and during this hyper armor period, taking damage will actually increase the Rage Slash's motion value by up to 50% with the maximum value being reached by taking at least 25 damage. Interrupting a Rage Slash with a Tackle or Guard Tackle after taking damage during its charge will keep your damage multiplier and carry it over to subsequent Rage Slashes, so you can basically store the damage you receive as long as you keep alternating Tackles and Rage Slashes. Unlike the TCS, you can execute this attack in any direction, and it also has a lingering hitbox. Now here's an interesting fact. When executing Rage Slash backwards, your attack will take about 10 frames longer to come out, because your hunter does a short turnaround animation before swinging the sword. While testing, we've observed the same early charge phenomenon that we saw on the TCS, albeit to a lesser degree. Rage Slash automatically gains a level 1 charge if executed after a strong charged, adamant, or a strong wide slash. Effective use of this move requires a much different playstyle than its alternative as the optimal time to start it is before the monster hits you with an attack, so you can absorb damage to get the extra motion value, and then release the Rage Slash when the monster is recovering. This is why it's important to know the monster's patterns and tells, so you can shortcut into Rage Slash before getting hit. This switch skill doesn't need long openings like TCS, however, it is a lot riskier to use, because you are getting hit on purpose, and even with that 50% damage reduction, it's very easy to cart on monsters that have multi-hit attacks. You also have to be careful with statuses. As we said earlier, Hyper Armor can't protect you against those. Unlike with the other switch skills where one was generally favorable over the other, Rage Slash and True Charge Slash are both great. The optimal choice just depends on the monster you're fighting. It's easy to see from the motion values that TCS is the stronger option, However, landing a TCS requires long openings, which not every monster has. As a general guideline on monsters that have many TCS openings, like Narwa, Nargakuga, Magnamalo, or topple easily like Apex monsters, TCS is the optimal choice. But if the monster has few long openings and doesn't topple easily, like Teostro or Camellios, then Rage Slash is better. Now that's the end of this video. Hope you guys learned something new. Thank you so much for watching, have fun. Avoid hunting edge at all costs, and see you in the next one.